and I challenge you or I charge you to pay attention. This topic is very interesting, simple, only if you pay attention. I'm going to use different methods that will aid your understanding to pass or to impart or to teach the topic. So please pay attention. Then before I forge ahead on the topic, I want to make this known to you that in government, when we stay a state, a state does not mean legal states. A state in government mean country, like Nigeria. That is what a state means in government. It's not like Anambra state, on those states, Ogu states, Adamawa states, among others. So bear that in mind. And if a state is synonymous to country, if a state is synonymous to country, and you know Nigeria is a country, how can you use the idea of Nigeria as a country to synthesize the meaning of a state? I am going to give you some kind of, uh, this is map of Africa. I have asked a question that if a state is synonymous to country and Nigeria is a country, what can you deduct? How can you use that knowledge to give a definition of what a state is? Anybody? Fair, turn on your video. Sound transfer. Okay, yes. Um, a state is a political organized body occupying a space. I'm listening to you. Most of that are, that your videos are not turned on, please do that. A state is it's a political organized. It's a political organized. Okay, okay, thank you. Political organized. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. And you are trying to tell me that a state is a politically organized body of people. Is that what you're going to say? Yes. Uh -huh. A state is a politically organized body of people. Please, uh, I want you to jot some things down in this definition. There are four steps. There are four steps in the definition of a state. There are four steps, and the first step, I'm going to analyze them. Once you know the first step, I'm assuring you, you don't have a problem with the definition. Number one step, it said a state is a politically organized body of people. Take note of that. And the politically organized body of people, what happened? They occupy a definite territory. Take note of that. Politically organized body of people occupying a definite territory. That is the second. Then the third, with an organized government. With an organized government. Fourth, free from external control. I have taken four steps in my definition of a state. And I expect you to outline the four steps. So it, tomorrow, by the time you want to uh, study a state, you quickly what, grasp the words, the meaning. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to expand on the four steps, which I have mentioned. I said a state is a politically organized body of people. 
When we say politically organized body of people, that means population. Okay, let me, permit me, let me read this message. Okay, okay, okay. See, uh, I'm going to do that. Somebody said I should recap. I said a state is a politically organized body of people. That's the first step. Politically organized body of people. That's the first step. Occupying definite territory or geographical area. That's the second step. Occupying definite territory. That's the second step. Occupying definite territory. That's the second step. Third step. With an organized government, and organ I mean A N, A N organized government. Then the fourth, free from external control. The states, we have some group of people. That's what I mean by organized group of people, and the people we occupy a particular area. I'm going to analyze that based on the African map I have here. They will organize a particular area, and that is the definite territory. And that definite territory they have occupied, in that place, there must be what we call governments. Of course, I think I've explained this. Okay, Oyinda Mola said is breaking. Is that the same to all of you? No. Okay, all right, thank you. Oyinda Mola is your network. Hmm? your network don't worry i'm also recording this class i will share the video later for your better understanding in case of those people that will be having issue with the network okay i understand that most of in our network in nigeria is if i not none is that none is can none can be given 100 percent okay as i am here I'm, I'm i'm using different like at times the one that is my best network can disappoint me i have to switch so please, let's continue. I said, uh, the body of people occupying definite geographical entity. And that definite geographical entity, when I was teaching you the scopes of government, government as an institution of the state, I told you that there's need for government as an institution of the state in order to ensure that anarchy does not reign. I think I did that in the class with a typographical analysis on the board for those of, those of you that were in my class that day. So there must be a government governing the affairs of the people that are occupying that definite geographical entity. And that government must possess something and that is sovereignty. That's what I mean by free from external control. The government should not be controlled by external body. It must be controlled within the geographical entity. When I say geographical entity, I mean within the scope of that country. For instance, that your room now, assuming that your room is a country, you should be able to, any, everybody in that place now, that's what I refer to as a politically organized body of people. Everybody in that your room. Then, the where you pilot the affairs, the way you govern that your room so that nobody will misbehave. Eh? The method you apply, that is the government. That is what I mean by organized governments. Then if the way you control your room, nobody will come from another room to come and direct the affairs of your room. That means the government of your room is free from external control. I have taken your room now as a, as a case study. Maybe as, as me, your room is a country. Your room occupies some people and has a, body, has a kind of government that parallels the affairs of the people in there. And that government does not have a direct control or indirect control from anybody outside your room. That is what I mean by what it states. Who does not understand? If you don't understand, raise your hand. I will recognize you. I have summarized what the state is. Okay, Osho. Tell me, let me know where you don't understand. So I think the last thing you said about the state, sir. Oh, I said a state is a politically organized body of people. 
occupying definite geographical entity with an organized government free from external control. Okay, and I analyze the, I said there are four steps in the definition. Hmm. Uh, there are four steps in the definition. So the first step, I analyze them. I said when I say politically organized body of people, that has to do with the population. Okay, occupying definite geographic point, that has to do with what territory of that land. Like I give an instance of your room as a territory now. Okay, then I said with an organized government, meaning that there must be rules and regulations. There must be a set of governments that follow the affairs of that definite territory. Then free from external control, that is, you should be able to govern without anybody coming from outside to direct your affair. That is what I mean by that. And I, I think I use a case study of your what? Your room. You know, your room is partitioned. You cannot leave the border of your room to another room now. You know that you're outside of your room. That is how a state is. If you look at the map I have here, you will see different line. If you see Chad here, you will see the line. That is That line now is what we call border separating Chad from uh, Libya, separating Chad from Sudan, separating Chad from Niger, or from Central African Republic, separating Chad from Cameroon, separating Chad from Nigeria, among others. So the line you are seeing is like the partition of your room, separating your room from another, what, another room. That is where I can analyze it. Every state in the world, every country in the world must have a definite territory. Except, take note, except Palestine. Take note of this. It's a UTMU question. Except Palestine. Palestine is in the middle. It's very close to Israel. Jot this down. Palestine, if you check world map today, you cannot see Palestine because it possess all that characteristics of a state except definite territory. And that is why Palestine is not on the world map. The area that could have been given to Palestine as a definite territory, is, that, is, that is where we have the Strip of Gaza and West Bank. And that is a disputed territory between Palestine and uh, Israel. And Israel has refused to relinquish the territory to Palestine, despite appeal from the United Nations. Please take note of that. But other country, you will see that they have definite territory and they are separated from other states in the world, as you can see it in the African map. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Am I communicating? Are you, are you getting what I'm Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Then, I don't need because I have actually showcased what I'm saying. Who can give me an example of a state here now? Give me an example of a state. Nigeria. Nigeria one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ghana. Ghana. Yes. Algeria. Algeria. So people are not talking of Kenya. Kenya. Come on. Cameroon, South Africa. Chad, South Africa, South Africa, yes. all right, Tunisia, Tunisia, thank you very much, thank you very much, so what I have explained so far, are what I have in this template, as you can see, for those of you that are not, I believe all of you are with my notes, I believe all of you are with my notes, and I, I have given instruction, make sure you write that notes, so, this is what um, I mean Mr. By Emmanuel. Estate. Yes. So I told you that the um, is my note. Yeah, you told me. You told me. I'm, you told me. Your case is uh, noted. Hmm? So this is a pro state: Ghana, Germany, Ghana. France, Haiti, Japan. Mr. Yes. Mr. Emmanuel. Okay. Okay. All right. No problem. My note. No problem. Okay, then the next objective of this lens now is feature or characteristics of a state. From the definitions, 
from the definition, I have pinpointed four of the features. I want a smart student now to tell me. One, if you know, raise your hand, I will recognize you. Okay. Enoch, I have sent the note before. I've sent the note. Somebody asked me if I'm going to send the notes. I sent my, I think I, you were in my class class. I have my completed notes sent out before. Okay. Uh, maybe, just chat me after the class. Okay. Chat me after the class. I said, I have four features mentioned in the course of my explanations of the meaning of the states. If you know, raise your hand. You know the four features mentioned. Nobody. So what's the question? I said. I want to try. Okay. Okay. Yeah, is that not is a political organized body of the people? Mm, what that political organized body of people? What is it called? Population. Population. So you stand. That's what I'm expecting. Population. That is one characteristic. Population. Somebody asked me what is the question. I said in the definition, I have I have indirectly mentioned four characteristics. I have mentioned four characteristics. What are these four characteristics I have mentioned? There are six characteristics of a state, but I have mentioned four in the definition. So I want you to tell me the four that I have mentioned. Uh, yes, fair on me. Or sure, fair on me. Your hand is up. Um, sir, um, government. Government. God bless you. Government. Yes, I mentioned that. Yes. Somebody has mentioned population. I mentioned government. The, the remaining two. Yes, Oida Mola. You have the floor. Your hands have, you are recognized. Okay, you know, Oyu is not talking. Shey. Sir, occupation. Occupation, okay. No. Like, like. No, 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 no. That's not occupation. Amarachi? Sir, um, there is a governor, like a ruler to rule Sir. the state. Oh, Sir. No, 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 no. Yes? No, no, no. Yes? Um, so, uh, sovereignty. Sovereignty, eh? I said it will be free from external control. When you see it's free from external control, that is sovereignty. Yes, remain one. Remain one. No, ma. Sir. No, no, no. I'm listening to no. Borderline. Borderline. Yeah, what do you call the borderline? What do you? You are getting. We are getting close to this. Territory. Hmm? Territory. Territory or boundary. Territory or boundary. Territory or boundary. These are the four characters I've mentioned here. And there are other two that are not mentioned here. And that is permanence and recognition. Permanence and recognition. There are six characteristics of a, a state. Six characteristics of a state. So we'll go in detail now of the analysis of this characteristic. We'll better understand it. Permanence. As you can see, Nigeria. How many of you know when Nigeria was put in this place as a country called Nigeria? Hello, I have asked a question. How many of you eh, know when Nigeria was put in the area it is occupying now as a Nigeria? And how many times has it moved from one place to another? Nobody is responding to that question. I know I've not moved from one place to another. It has not moved from one place to another. <laughs> Nigeria has been before you and I were giving birth to, and it will continue to be where it is. So a state is permanent. It cannot be moved from one place to another. Okay? It cannot be moved from one place to another. And it does not change. A state does not change like government. Government changes. But the state does not what change. 
That is what I mean by permanence as a crisis of a state. Who does not understand that? If you are not talking, mute yourself. You can only unmute yourself when you are to talk. Who does not understand this? Okay. I believe all of you understand what it is meant by permanence as a characteristic of a state. In a simple term, a state does not change. Hmm? A state does not change. Like government that changes. A state is permanent. Nigeria has been where it is, and Nigeria will continue to be where it is. Nigeria will not what, move from one place to another. That is a characteristic of a state. Close to this here, we have definite territory. This is where I'm going to make certain analysis. Like what I said the other time, if you can see my, what I project here now, you will see it there. I said, definite territory has, means that every state must have a limit. If you look at the African map I give to them, know that a country just extended like that. Every country has a border, and that is the limit. And that border must show a clear demarcation between that country and that and the many others. Then, I've said that what are the composition of the territory of a state? I believe I'm communicating. Am I communicating? Yes, sir. All right. I said. Have known that a state, yeah, thank you, must have a limit to its size. It must be separated, it must have a definite boundary that separates it from other. What are the composition of the territory of a state? This is a UTMU question. It's also a wire question. Take note. The territory of a state includes the forests, the landmass, the airspace, mm, among others. The mountain. See, this, if you look up, if you should go out now, if you look up, that this airspace you are looking at is a part of Nigerian territory. The Atlantic Ocean is part of our territory. Some of you may not be aware that Nigeria share border with four countries on land, but we also have maritime border with two countries. Take note what I'm telling you. You should jot all this thing down as I'm telling you. Nigeria share maritime border with Equatorial Guinea and Ghana. When I say maritime border, Nigeria share border on water, eh? With equatorial. Uh, sir, can you repeat what? I said, I said, Nigeria share maritime border with Equatorial Guinea and Ghana. We don't, we don't share land border with them, but we share maritime border with Equatorial Guinea and Ghana. That's to say that. What I'm trying to say in essence is that I'm trying to justify the fact that the Atlantic Ocean, the water, the river, the creeks, they are part of a what? The territory of a, a state. It's not only the land. When we say territory, don't lose that land is only the word. What to mean by territory? Is that understood? Is that understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Just as I told you yes, that time, sir. I said Palestine happened to be only country in the world without a definite territory or boundaries. And I have told you, you can see from what I projected here. That is what, just take note of that. It's a UTMA question. Next says government. I don't need to say more about government. It's what we have studied before. Okay. A state must have government that what? That pilot her affairs. Of course, you know that where there's no government, what will happen? There will be no states. No, 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 no. Where there's no there government, no there will not be peace. There will be anarchy, there will be chaos. Okay? That is that. That is why it is expedient. The states will not be in order. Yes, thank you very much. States will not be in order. Okay? Next story, they will have sovereignty. Just as I've said the other time, the definition. Sovereignty simply means the state must be free from any form of external control. The state must be free from any form of external control. 
That is the concept of sovereignty in this perspective. A state must be able to take decision within the territorial integrity, just as I gave an instance of your, of your bedroom the other time or classroom. A state within your territorial integrity, for instance, when you are room, able to manage the affair of your room without another neighbor coming to your room to come and say, no, uh, this is what's supposed to do in your room. No, that means your room is not sovereign. A state, if, if you are a country, and somebody will still come from another country to come and tell you what's supposed to do in your country, that is not a state. A state must be free from external control. It must be able to take an internal decision, even an international relation, without any form of coercion or force. Amarachi, do you understand what I mean by sovereignty as a character of a state? Marachi, do you understand what I mean by sovereignty as a characteristic of a state? You see? She's battling with something there. Yeah? Enoch. So I'm you lost. Are... You are not. I'm lost. I'm lost. You are lost. And hey, I know. That's why I ask you. You no, know, that is one of the reasons I always ask you to turn on your video. I actually knew that uh, you were lost. That's why I ask you that question. Hmm? That is that is one of that's one of the benefits of you turning on your video. I was teaching a student this morning in SS3. I look at her face from home here. I say, ah, I know her very well. I say, what is wrong? I say, I'm feeling headache. Okay, I have to advise. Okay, do this. If she has not turned on her video, I won't be able to know what she's going through. I'm not, I did not study psychology, but I'm a psychologist as a diplomat. If I look at you now, I know what you are doing. I know what, if you are chatting with your phone there, I know. Hmm? Okay. What I mean is that, Amarachi, I said sovereignty. I have defined it in the definition. I gave an instant right time, like your room. If you are in your room and a neighbor will still come and tell you what you're supposed to do in your room, it means that your room is not free from external control. You get it, right? Okay. Taking your room now as a state, if you now have a state that another country will still come and control and tell the state that this was supposed to I mean, that state is not free from external control. For a state to be called a state, it must be sovereign. And what is the concept of being sovereign? It means that that territory must be able to take her internal and external decision without any influence without any influence from other countries in the world. Just like in your room, you should be able to manage the affairs of your room without somebody distracting your attention again, you know. Just like you should be able to take the affairs of your room that your neighbor, without your neighbor coming to come and tell you what you're supposed to do. Do you get it now? Yes. Sovereign means mean they say she's able to manage itself without any external control, without anybody come from outside, without any country coming to dominate it. Okay, that is what I mean by that uh, sovereignty. Then here, population. Population, as a matter of fact, I have defined it in definition too. In a state, the number of people residing in that state should be approximated. What's the essence of this? It helps the government to manage and provide the need I provide for the need of the people. The sense of knowing, knowing the approximation of people living in a particular territory is for the government to plan for them. Census should be conducted every 10 years in every polite and a state that is governed by dynamic leaders. Census should be conducted every 10 years to know the approximation of people residing in that uh, environment. The essence of it is to make sure that government provide adequate uh, preparation for the citizen. It's just like your family. How I many of you say you are in a family now, especially your nuclear family, that you know the, know the number of people in that place? Yes. Why, why do you think that parents give birth to the number of certain people? Uh, see children, I mean. 
to be able to cater for them. You understand? Why is that? I parents give to some give to three, some two, some one. The same thing in the state. The essence of knowing the number that you are dealing with is for you to prepare adequately for them. A state should know the number of citizens within the territorial integrity in order to provide for them adequately. Just like in a, in, in, in a nuclear family, the, the father and the mother will know their children, they will give birth to a particular set of number of children and they will be able to provide for them adequately. That is the sense of what population in a state. And the last but not the least is recognition. The last but not the least is recognition. I uh, will start in that perspective of your name. If I call a Marachina, you know that I'm referring to you, right? That means that name is recognized and it's attached to you. Yes. If I call Enoch, you know I'm referring to you. If I call Pei, you know I'm referring to you. If I call Sheyi, if I call Chinenye, if I call Feromi, you know I'm referring to you. Okay? So it means that you that name is peculiar for you. If I call Asha, Onyinda, Jerry, you know I'm referring to you. If I call uh, that Sheyi, Pei will not answer me. If I call Feromi, Chinenye will not answer me. Okay? In the state, a state must be recognized both internally and externally. If I don't recognize your name, I can just say, Hey, gay. That means I don't recognize your name. Hey, boy. That means I don't recognize your name. If I don't recognize that, I will not, I will not say that I said that land. So, for you to call it a state, it must be recognized within and outside. America must know that it's in Nigeria. Ghana must know that it's in Nigeria. Those of us in Nigeria must recognize that it's in Nigeria. Okay? So it must be recognized. It's very essential for a state to be recognized. And the citizen will also be attached identity based on the recognition, recognition given to that state. Whenever you travel out, they say it's a citizen of uh, Nigeria. It's a citizen of uh, America. It's a, it's a citizen of Ghana because that territory has been recognized, has been given necessary accolade and recognition in the international system. These are the characteristics of a state. In summary, I'm able to define what a state is in time of a politically organized body of people occupying definite geographical entity with an organized government. And I'm able to give you instances or example of a state. And I'm able to reel out the six characteristics of a state as in government, as in definite territory, as in permanence, as in sovereignty, as in population, as in recognition. And I'm able to tell you that when we say definite territory, the definite territory of a state does not mean the landmass alone, the airspace, the waterways, the rock, the every other thing, the forest, part of the definite territory of a state. And I'm able to tell you too as well that every country in the world has definite territory except Palestine. And I've told you the reason. And that is why, if you check the world map today, if you can, you can prove me. Go and check the world map. If you see Palestine, it's very close to Israel. Palestine is very close to Israel. Where you see Jordan, you see Lebanon, you see Israel, you see Egypt. Go and check if you see Palestine there. But it's a country, but without a definite. That is why it is not the country is not appear appearing in the world map. These are major things I have what hit in course of my explanation. I want to know if there's any question from you. Question time. Yes, no matter your question. Sir. Yes. So you said that when was Nigeria created? Does that mean the independence or Hello? Can you repeat your question? I can yes, repeat your question. Nigeria was you asked the question, where was Nigeria created? Okay. Is it the independence of the Amadeus? All right, thank you. Nigeria was created in January 1914. Okay? Nigeria as a state was created January 14, as in January 1914. January 1914. That was when Nigeria was created. Okay? And it could not take part or in the, most of the international organization as at that time because it was not a sovereign territory. 
it was not a sovereign territory in the sense that it was a colonized territory. It was given nomenclature of a state. October 1st, 1960, having gained political independence from the British government. And Nigeria, as a matter of fact, became the 99th member of the United Nations as a sovereign state in 1960. I don't know if I have answered your question. No, ma, I have answered yeah. your question. OK, OK. Uh, somebody, somebody raised hand the other time. OK, the person has lowered the hand. I thought it was Enoch. So it's me. OK, your question. Yes, so it's me. OK. I want to. I saw that Palestine is, Palestine is located in the world map and um, between Jordan River and um, East. You said? But you said that it was not, it's not in the world map. Do you have the world map there? Palestine are you is serious? located in the world map. Do you know what world map? Are you browsing okay. it on the internet or what? Yes. Hello, we are with you. Yes, I just checked it and the road that Palestine is in. Is he wrote? Mm -mm. Is he wrote all on the map, world map? Get something clear here. I know I told you that said is close, is shared border with what? Lebanon and uh, with Israel. But I said map. I show you world map the right time. I show you Africa map the right time. Do you have a map of the world there? And where you see Palestine in that place? Is that what I'm asking you? Yeah. I said the map, the map. Yeah, no, please. I said, are you do you have a word map there? Or you are reading on a paper? Is it a word map that you are working with and where you locate Palestine on the word map? That's what I'm asking you. No, no. Tell us, tell us now, so no, that before no. you for, before you convince the house, tell us what you what you did. I only um, researched it when you talked about it. Uh -huh. Please, so oh, please try to understand. It's good to research, but get adequate information. I'm still talking of map. I think I show you something the right time. I show you the map of uh, Africa, right? In the map of Africa, you will see you will see the different country in Africa there. I am not saying browsing it out. You can see now. This is what I mean. In this, this is assuming this is world map now. Maybe I will have to time will not permit me. I will have done that. Maybe tomorrow, if we agree on the time we are to meet tomorrow. I think I'm going to do that for you. So that you will, I, I will arrest your doubting Thomas. Look at the Africa map now. Any, con the, any country that is here now in Africa that is not appearing here could not be said it has definite territory. In the world map, you will see all the country like this, but Palestine is not located. I'm not saying it's not a country. They will tell you share border with this, but check the world map. Is it located there in the world map? That's what I'm saying. It's not there because of the fact that it does not have a definite territory which will have accrued to it is what status on the world map. You know, do you get that? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Which other question do we have here before we call it a day? OK. In absence of further questions, uh, I believe you have all learned in this class today. Yes, sir. There's only one voice I had, though. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. So please make sure you do the assignment as stated in your notes. Do the assignment, do your notes. Okay. By God's grace, when we resume, I will mark everything. Okay? So now, okay. uh,